Hello everybody and welcome to the mu- Okay, I, I realize I'm dating myself a bit here. So... Stop. Hold on for a I just like that, Christmas is over. Right, welcome to the Modify XTC review. This little puppy is gonna be taken out for quite the spin today. We've got some shooting tests, we got some chronos, we got an overview, and of course we have an unboxing for you, so let's just get to the first part immediately, take it to the table, let's see how you get this thing. The unboxing experience, uh, just off the cuff, pretty uh, spacious cardboard box. It looks like uh, pretty much the default box that Modify has been running with for their M4 series. I know their Mod 24 thing is uh, gray and, and red and I know that of course their PP2000 which I reviewed on this channel as well comes in its own little fancy carrying container. Not this time for the XTC you get the regular brown box. The only thing that's different is of course this little thing. Ooh which we will be talking about during the overview. So for now, let's get to the actual unboxing. Tab, tab, lay down and pull. All right, so this is what you get. First time you open her up, uh, you got this like top layer of cardboard, which Modified does where it just has a little extra ooh, and name of the weapon, whatever. Uh, you get a little carrying case with all your paperwork. Uh, this is actually mostly stickers. I know there's a, patch in here as well, a modify patch. Um, you've seen this one before. If you have ever bought like a modify system, these just come with it. And you got a little Aster warranty card from Titan as well. And shooting targets, whatever you need. And then of course the booklets. This is just a XTC booklet. You know, how to not shoot your eyes and your dog and your sister and your car and then some basic weapon operations manuals, how to change the battery, how to change the fire mode, how to flip the sights up and down, how to adjust them. So if you do read this, if you're completely new to it, if you do read this, you'll be in good shape and you can see all the other guns that you can go out and spend your money on. Right, top layer of protection. This is actually the only protection layer that's on the top level of the gun. I would have liked to seen some foam or something over this, so like direct impact wouldn't necessarily scuff the gun, but it looks like she shipped in good shape. Uh, this is all layered cardboard on top of one another. It works fine, I suppose. I don't think there's a lot of movement in this. Don't know about the shock absorption, but you know, it's good quality. It's better than Flamingo. You got a little Modify branded magazine. Just looks like a standard, ordinary, yep, mid-cap mag. Uh, if you're running 120 rounds anyway, and this is your only magazine, that's a lot of ammo and, and you're fine. Whereas, pretty frequently and pretty fast, you're gonna upgrade to some more mid caps instead of rock and high caps so you don't get the tactical maracas. No such thing with the Modify XTC, good to see. And of course, gun itself. Now this is the XTC with the added silencer, sorry, suppressor, uh, and it's out here. Um, it's actually sort of dug into the edge of the box with this foaming, so let's just see if we can Get her out, pull, and lift. This shizzles out of the way. And here we got her. Okay, so, I mean, first impressions right off the bat. Build quality seems super nice. I, this reminds me of when I unboxed my Crytac um, Trident. This is sort of the same powder coat. It feels like it's the same. So that, that's a good thing, by the way. That means pretty high quality. And one thing that the Modify hasn't done is that I haven't gone super futuristic on the exterior. Sure, it's, you know, you got the honeycomb pattern on the dust cover. But for example, the forward assist, still there. And yeah, it's a little bit of edged, but it's not super pronounced and weird. Flat-headed trigger, which seems super responsive. Very loose, I like that a lot. Four grip seems sturdy. The entire gun seems pretty sturdily put together. Let's do a wiggle test. That's the dust cover. Let's hold that in place. There's something wiggling in there. But uh, yeah, 
no way really significant. All in all, this seems like a solid put together gun. There's a bit of scuffing on the silencer here, but that looks like it's just cardboard dust. Yeah, that's coming off really easy. So no worries there. Uh, yeah, this seems really well built, but let's go into details about this and the guts in the overview. Okay, and that was the unboxing. So much like we do in all the other reviews, we're gonna go tip to butt, describe how the gun feels, how it works, and some notable features. Starting off at the tip here, with this model, you do get the integrated sort of suppressor, but not to worry. The suppressor does come on standard 14 millimeter counterclockwise threading, so you can remove it if you so desire. It's a uh, standard, really cool looking suppressor, actually. By standard, I of course mean the threading, the length, and I do believe there's foam in this as well. Now, the keen eyed amongst you might actually recognize this silencer or suppressor or thing filled with foam from somewhere else. And that is because this is actually Modify's own sort of proprietary design. You may have seen this on their sniper rifles. Same thing, looks cool on an M4 as well. You can also get a version with a outer barrel that goes flush with the actual handguard and then switches into a standard flash hider. Looks very cool, feels very nice. And obviously if you do plan on tapping this into HPA immediately, which I don't know why you would, but we'll get to that in a bit you'll have a foam filled suppressor which can actually silence your shots pretty effectively. So, moving on further down, we've got the Modify flip up iron sights. These have a good click to them, not super over positive, made out of plastic. That's both a good thing and a bad thing, obviously. There's no need to tag on unnecessary weight at the end of your gun, but obviously they're not gonna last as well. Sight picture is just completely standard. M4 sight picture. There's nothing fancy about these. It's not like their Magpul uh, squared off or anything like that. Got a little adjustment window at the bottom here for super accurate and not so super accurate. But again, said it before, I'll say it again. If you're shooting, especially with tracers, you can pretty much just feel it out. No need for the iron sights. So anyway, moving on to the handguard itself. Really super sturdy handguard. M-Lock on the six o'clock, the three o'clock and the nine o'clock position, standard M-Lock configurations with plenty of rail space for you for all of your attachment needs, such as handguards or lights and lasers. And of course on top, we have a nice monolithic 22 millimeter Picatinny rail on top. They saved off a lot of weight by giving it some lightning cuts down the side here. But uh, all in all, it just gives a really modern design without compromising too much on some wacky design language. Moving down to the receiver itself, metal receiver, both upper and lower in a very nice powder coat, very modestly uh, decorated with a Modify logo on the right side of the receiver and absolutely jack on the left side of the receiver. So yeah, if you like black, this is definitely back in black. The receiver wobble is non-existent. This thing fits together completely as it's supposed to. There is zero room for leeway on either side. Moving on down to, of course, hop-up chamber. As you can see, got a standard bolt hold open hop-up window configuration. You can get that out by just pressing the uh, bolt release on the left side of the firearm. Let's do that again. Wah! I don't know why I keep calling a firearm. It's not a firearm, firearm imitation and zoop, flies out. Underneath this cover, you have a rotary style hop-up, which has some, some texturing or something to it. it. It's gritty, which is really nice because it means you're not over adjusting. You have sort of a sense of when you're turning it and when you're not turning it, or when you're just breaking off a nail. I dig it. And of course, this dust cover has this uh, sort of honeycomb-esque pattern on it. For those who are curious, this is a pretty standard mount, so you can switch it out with a regular looking dust cover if you're really that not into it. Of course, we have mag release located at exactly where you think it would be. Super simple, easy mag release. Releases the uh, brought along magazine pretty well. It's not like it shoots out of the mag well or anything like that. So it's a little tight. Having them shoot out can be a bad thing and a good thing. I know it's really cool for your tactical loadouts to have it eject 
really thoroughly, but sometimes if you just bang it, you don't want your mag to go flying immediately. And it still passes the mag flip test. Sort of. And this is actually my one gripe with this gun's exterior because the exterior is phenomenal, but my one gripe is that it has ambidextrous selectors on a 45 degree switch with a super positive engagement. Love it. Uh, but they have the ambi trigger, which works great from both sides, but not an ambi mag release. What's with the lefty hate? Moving on further down, we have the Modify XTC grip. I think it's a decent grip angle. It's beaver tail, so it allows you to index pretty high on it, but it's not as aggressive as I would have liked. If you look at my KWA T6 Ronin review, I really like the PTS because it's slim and has a very aggressive angle. This, not so much. This is more of a traditional M4 angle to grip in, and it has this little nubbin at the bottom here so you can feel exactly where your hand is. Now, I am, I've got quite the mittens, and I'm indexing pretty well on this, and I don't mind this nub down here. So, if you've got bigger hands than me, well, what are you doing with an M4? There are like hundreds of LMGs out there for you, buddy. Speaking of LMGs, stay tuned for tomorrow where we're gonna have a special review coming up of, uh, well, obviously I'm not gonna spoil that. Just make sure to subscribe and stick around for that. But, moving on to the back, we have sort of a crane stock imitation version two stock, six position extendo stock. You've seen it before, you know the score. And, um, yeah, plenty of battery space in here, and this is a fantastic thing. Big point on Modify's behalf here. In order to access your battery, pull down this little tab at the back, and there you go. You don't have to floss your nails or try to press tabs on both sides. Literally, just pull it down, comes out, there's your battery wire. You might have noticed this isn't your regular old Tamiya, so already we got big old points if this was just hooking up to a regular gearbox, but this gearbox has a little extra juice. You see, let's have a little bit of a history lesson. So back a couple of years ago when Modify first made their M4 series, they were like, damn all you youngins with your ETUs and your MOSFETs. You only need a good shimmin, gosh darn it. And they made a weapon without an ETU or a MOSFET and then tried to price it as a completely premium experience. Now in fairness to Modify, that gun did shoot really well and had surprisingly snappy trigger response. So no hark on that. But uh, yeah, a couple of years later, turns out some genius in the engineering department said, why not both? And that's what they have. This, instead of Modify going out of their way to make their own ETUs and experiment and have failure at the electronic trigger control units, like, I don't know, a certain Taiwanese manufacturer who made the first really successful nine millimeter carbine, they decided to say, you know what, let the expert do the expert thing and we'll handle the rest. So they got Titan on board, stuffed an Aster into every one of these guns, and it is amazing. Now, from factory, it's designed to shoot with a moderate pull, and no pre-cocking, but still obviously with the balance and checks and resistance capacity of a Titan Master. So you can still slap an 11.1 in here, absolutely no issue. You get excellent response on it, fantastic. Though, if you do have a Titan programming station, which is the little thingamabob you put at the end of the cable, and you can hook it up to your computer, you can actually program a surprising amount of customization into this thing. We're talking about trigger length, trigger response in the form of pre-cock, Act breaking. You can do a lot of stuff with this thing. Now, sure, there has been some issues with the Astro firmware, but they are working out those kinks and bumps along the way. And I know most of those issues are people, for example, doing DSG builds on them, which they aren't quite optimized for as well. For a standard 16 to 1 geared badass thing like this, the Astro is more than plenty. And I think, as my sort of testament, my, my sign of good faith, I've done a little shooting test for you. I teased this in another video, so why don't we just cut to it straight away. Told you it shoots good, right? Nice, solid, 
firm trigger response on that one. And internally, I cannot say this enough, this is a standard V2 box, standard V2 components with the trigger, with the gate aster in there. What that effectively means is that if you want to upgrade to any other form of VTU, like a Titan or even a Jeftron or a pre-run or anything like that, 100% compatible like most V2 boxes, all, all in all, Modify 100% showing their colors as a premium manufacturer of airsoft weapons. I'll go as far as to say that Modify is coming for that Crytac crown. So, you've heard me talk about it for quite a while. Let's uh, take it to the chrono, shall we? All right, got the Modify XTC loaded up. 20s in the mag, that's .20s, shooting an 11-1 light bulb. Let's see if we can get some readings out. 1 1.25, 1.25, 1.26. All right. So about 370 FPS with two zeros, that's 1.25 joules. You can probably kick that up by using some heavier BBs. I think you can hit 1.3, 1.4 with this pretty easily if you use some more field regular BBs like 0.36s or something. Let's let her rip. Pretty modest, 18 rounds per second fire rate. Pretty standard from what you'd see out of a normal M4, but I gotta say that trigger response, it's got me feeling things. Let's just round off before we, uh, things get a bit too exciting. Modify coming right out of the gate with this. Honestly, amazing performance coming out of an in-box package, and if you want to, and you, you know, take the time and learn how manual pre-cocking works, you can get this trigger response down to zilch. Really a premium product from a premium manufacturer, and I can't really see any other reason to buy any other M4 in like late 2020, early 2021. Sure, if you're not into this aesthetic, if you're looking for a Mark 18, if you're looking for a 416, this isn't gonna be your cookie, but I would, by far prefer to buy this gun, which shoots fantastically from the box, and then get all the matching externals, like a Daniel Defense Omega X-Rail, or a Geisley Automatic if you're looking for that 416 look, and then rock this from stock, because this is an amazing performer. This is without a doubt one of my favorite guns of 2020 in the M4 category. It's coming up there. It's dangerously close to beating out the T6. Modify knows what they're doing. So I can't say other than huge recommendations from here. Fantastic shooter, internals are spec and amazing. Comes stock with a industry leading ETU. What are you still doing here? Go buy it. Yeesh. <laughs>